Kam Vitam Sya E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandu Jagatate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Satadevi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Turubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namah Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadhara Shri Vashari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacharishatarine Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai <clears throat> So yesterday we discussed a very important and enlivening verse Text number 15. So if we study Srimad Bhagavatam, we will notice that Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very beautifully and systematically, systematically presented. Every verse flows beautifully into the next verse. And there's links, very clear links between all of the verses. Uh, one great a scholar commented that Srimad Bhagavatam reads like a very beautifully and well-constructed thesis. When we read some of the other scriptures, the other Puranas, uh, sometimes it seems like, you know, things are all over the place and verses are sporadic and jumping from one theme to another theme. But Srimad Bhagavatam being, uh, you know, the cream of all Vedic literature, um, being the ripened fruit of the Vedic literature tree. It is very, very beautifully structured. So in text number 15, uh, Sutta Goswami is speaking all of these verses. He says, with sword in hand, intelligent men cut through the binding knots of reactionary work by remembering the personality of Godhead. Therefore, who will not pay attention to his message? So it finishes off with this this um, statement, Kona Kuryat Kata Ratim. Who will not pay attention to his message? So the, the, um, the prescription, uh, the cure, is for us to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And how do we remember? Remembrance comes from having heard the glorious pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So why is it that some of us or many of us find that we are not attracted to his message? Kona kuryat kata ratim. We cannot pay uh, dedicated and focused attention to the message of the Lord. So this is what text number 16 addresses very beautifully. Shushruso Shradadana Sya Vasudeva Kataruchi Syan Mahatseva Yabipraha Punya Tirta Nishevanat. O twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely free from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudev. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Uh, there's about three paragraphs here. 
Uh, would anyone like to volunteer reading the purport? Ndoleka Matuzi, can I read? Yes, and then after that, Namrata Matuzi can read. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Purport by Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. The condition, the condition life of a living being is caused by his revolting against the Lord. There are men called devas, O godly living beings, and there are men called asuras, O demons, who are against the authority of the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, 16th chapter, a vivid description of the asuras is given, in which it is said that the asuras are put into lower and lower states of ignorance, life of the life, and so things to the lower animal form and have no information of the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. The suras are gradually rectified to God consciousness by the mercy of the Lord's liberated servitors in different countries according to the supreme will. Such devotees of God are very confidential associates of the Lord. And when they come to save human society from the dangers of God godlessness, they are known as a powerful incarnation of the Lord, as sons of the Lord, as servants of the Lord, or as associates of the Lord. But none of them falsely claim to be God themselves. This is blasphemy declared by the Asuras, and the demoniac followers of such Asuras also accept pretenders as God or his incarnation. In the revealed scriptures, there is definite, there is definite information of the incarnation of God. No one should be accepted as God or as an incarnation of God unless he is confirmed by the revealed scriptures. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm Hare Krishna, Thank you, Prabhuji. The servants of God are to be respected as God by the devotees who actually want to go back to Godhead. Such servants of God are called Mahatmas or Tirthas, and they preach according to particular time and place. The servants of God urge people to become devotees of the Lord. They never tolerate being called God. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was God himself, according to the indication of the revealed scriptures. But he played the part of a devotee. People who knew him to be God addressed him as God. Um, addressed him as God. But he used to block his ears with his hands and chant the name of the Lord Vishnu. He strongly protested against being called God, although undoubtedly he was God himself. The Lord behaves so to warn us against unscrupulous men who take pleasure in being addressed as God. Thank you. Last, last paragraph, anyone likes it? Hare Krishna. Yes, please you read. The servants of God come to propagate God consciousness and intelligent people should cooperate with them in every respect. By serving the servant of God, one can please God more than by directly serving the Lord. The Lord is more pleased when he sees that his servants are properly respected because such servants risk everything for the service of the Lord and so are very dear to the Lord. The Lord decre declares in the Bhagavad Gita 18.69 that no one is dearer to him than one who risks everything to preach his glory. By serving the servants of the Lord, one gradually gets the quality of such servants, and thus one becomes qualified to hear the glories of God. The eagerness to hear about God is the first qualification of a devotee eligible for entering the kingdom of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, this verse, uh, very important verse, and this is the start of a section from text number 16 all the way to text number 21. Very important uh, section because it explains, the section explains how bhakti progresses. How does bhakti progress? So we understand from reading Srila Prabhupada's books that there are many steps in the progressive stages of bhakti. And uh, who, there's what, two, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven stages from the beginning to the end. And uh, many of y'all may be familiar with them. 
the first stages are Shraddha, um, then there's Sadhu Sangha, and there's Bhajana Kriya. So Shraddha means everything starts with faith. Faith, everything is based on faith. And then when one has a little faith, faith in the devotees, faith in the message of the Lord, then one progresses to the stage of Sadhu Sangha, saying that this process seems very nice. Um, let me associate with the devotees of the Lord. And then after one associates with the devotees of the Lord, one moves to the stage called Bhajana Kriya. That means, uh, Bhajan means practice. Uh, one wants to take up the practice of Krishna consciousness a bit more seriously. So this verse, it describes the first three stages, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, and Bhajana Kriya. And um, we shall discuss how different facets of this verse uh, equate to the different stages. So the first uh, line here, Shushruso Shraddhan Nasya. It's very important. Uh, Prabhupada in Kila Prabhupada in one class, he said, um, he explained the meaning of this word, Shushruso. And Prabhupada says, it means an eagerness to hear. One should be eager to hear. And um, when one is eager to hear, there's a certain magic that starts to happen. Certain magic, and we shall discuss that magic. Um, Kila Prabhupada, uh, in one lecture, commenting on this line, he gives his own, uh, an example from his own life. Once, um, when Srila Prabhupada was in the entourage uh, of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, one of, he was then known as Abai. They used to call him Abai Babu. So one of the uh, devotees went up to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and said uh, to the spiritual master that this Abai Babu, he's been associating with us for some time. Um, maybe Guru Maharaj, you can consider initiating him. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's reply was very interesting. He said, um, yes, I will initiate him, initiate him. I have noted that he is very eager to hear. And Prabhupada talks about this particular incident that took place in 1933. Uh, it was uh, in 1933, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had taken a big, a big entourage to Vrindavan. And the purpose of the visit was to um, visit for 39 days, visit all of the holy places of Vrindavan. So one evening, uh, there was an announcement made that there are a few buses that are going to uh, see Sheshasai Vishnu Temple. This is a, a famous temple in Vrindavan. And uh, the buses will leave soon. Those who like to, to go can jump on the buses. And if those do not like to go, they can stay back and Guru Maharaj is speaking in the evening so they can come and listen to Guru Maharaj. They can go, those who don't want to go to pilgrimage. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, he was in the party and he thought to himself, you know, the Guru is speaking, and then we'll come back to the significance of that. The Guru is speaking. Uh, why should I go to see a holy place? It is of greater benefit to me that I stay and listen. Listen to my Guru Maharaj speak Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he noted this. He noted that a lot of his disciples jumped on the buses of, and went. But Abai, he was one of the few who stayed behind just to hear his spiritual master speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, he noted this. He noted that he likes to hear. And this hearing is very much encapsulated in this word Shraddhanasya, with care and attention. With care and attention. In um, uh, the Bhagavad, Sri Bhagavad Mahatmya, there's also another story. There was once a great Bhagavatam uh, reciter, um, a saint, his name was Gor, Gokarna. And he was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam for seven days and seven nights. So one time a ghost, a, a sinful person who got a ghostly body, was um, some, across, some or the other came across this Bhagavad Kata event. And this ghost would come every day and year. And after hearing, after the kata would finish, the ghost would go away and he would think, think about everything he heard in the kata, every word, every statement. He would meditate and he would try to absorb. And for seven days, this ghost would do that. He would come and hear. And then at the end, after the day, he would think and meditate. And it is explained that of all of the people, or most of the people that heard that Bhagavad Kata, at the end of their lives, many of them came back, took birth again. But this ghost was immediately attained the transcendental destination. And it is explained in the Bhagavad Mahatmya, simply because this ghost heard with care and attention. As they say, there's three types of hearing. One type of hearing is it comes here, it goes out the other side. The other one, it comes here. Some of it stays, but there's not much uh, assimilation and reflection. And the third type of hearing, which is the best type of hearing, it comes here, it's assimilated, it's reflected upon and it's really absorbed. That is the best type of hearing. And the second line says there, Vasudeva Kata Ruchi. Vasudev, Vasudev. There's Vasudev and there's Vasudev. Vasudev is Krishna. Kata Ruchi. This word Ruchi. Is, um, is very important. Ruchi means taste. It means taste. So it says, who are those people that are able to hear with care and attention? It is those people who have developed Ruchi, taste for Vasudev Kata. Taste. And this is very, very important in spiritual life and in the progression of bhakti. Those who have taste progress very quickly. And those who lack taste, everything is a struggle in the process of bhakti. Everything is a force. It's just like if we have a taste for something, nobody has to force us, nobody has to push us. Everything is just spontaneous. We just love doing it. So this taste for Vasudev Kata is extremely, extremely important. Because one who has taste, one has it. one spiritual path is just wide open. So the problem is, we all know that the anecdote, the cure for our material disease 
for our suffering in this material world, as Bhagavatam says repeatedly, time and time and time and time again, is to hear Vasudev Kata. But we are so unfortunate. We, even if there's some Kata taking place, sometimes we'll think, oh, who's speaking today? Um, is it such a such a speaker? Or if such a person is speaking, then I will go and hear. Or if someone else is speaking, maybe not. So we make preconditions, or, or maybe it's the first canto, yes, but second canto, it's all about creation, and you know, third canto is then there's cantos about astrology, astronomy, and the planets. Um, so I would taste sometimes it's fragmented it's not not fixed uh, it's not fixed so we do not yeah that's that's not the real type of ruchi sometimes we think yeah i've got taste but that taste is dependent on the speaker or, or what aspect of Bhagavatam. no real ruchi means uh, prati shloka every shloka every shloka of shimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada says every word is krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam. When one has real taste, every word in the Bhagavatam is simply like nectar. Simply like nectar. So yeah, this verse is saying, well, what to do with those people who have no taste? So unfortunate. So unfortunate. That the Srimad Bhagavatam is just pure nectar. Rasamayalam. It is the cure for everything. But this taste is lacking. So this beautiful verse of Bhagavatam tells us what to do if we lack taste. What should we do? Syan Mahatsevaya Vipraha. What should we do if we lack taste? We should serve the great souls the great devotees of the Lord. And um, who are these great devotees? Who are these great devotees? That is also explained. Who are the Mahatmas? And you'll see uh, Prabhupada, goes to, Krishna Prabhupada goes to great length in this verse to clarify this particular point because if the cure is to serve the great Mahatmas, if we serve such great Mahatmas, then the taste will come. But the question is, the problem is, if people do not know who the Mahatmas, and they go serve the wrong people, then the taste will not come. So Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada goes, uh, you know, being the, the merciful Acharya, Merciful pure devotee, the first two paragraphs, you know, some people may, may think, you know, Prabhupada is talking about suras and other personalities. And, you know, why is Prabhupada talking about in this purport? Because Prabhupada is trying to, to tell the readers of the Bhagavatam who are the real Mahatmas. And Prabhupada says, the real Mahatmas are firstly those that do not. Tolerate being called incarnations of God. And even says Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he was the Lord himself, if anyone would say you are God, he would block his ears and say, no, no, please don't call me God. Because he came as a devotee. So there's people that pretend to be incarnations. The Prabhupada says, serving such people, no, no. You, you're not going to get developed taste for Vasudev Kata. You must serve the real devotees of the Lord, the pure devotees of the Lord, those who are completely free from all vice, those who are pure devotees of the Lord, who are always serving the Lord. And Prabhupada says um, that such person, and this is so interesting, this verse, this verse never says you will get uh, taste for hearing the kata by the Lord of the Lord 
by serving the Lord? No, they say, but you serve the devotees. And Prabhupada says in the purport, by serving the servant of God, one can please God more than by directly serving the Lord. The Lord is more pleased when he sees that his servants are properly respected because such servants risk everything for the service of the Lord and are so dear to him. So I thought I may share, it's such an important verse, but the time is, uh, time is going, but, and we're gonna sing a bhajan today. Uh, um, uh, so I'll, I'll just come back to this point, you know, uh, how do we serve the Mahatmas and who is the Mahatma? So we discussed who is the Mahatma and I've got a slide here. Um, this is something, just a bit of a digression. It's a beautiful quote by Radha Govinda Swami. He says, most people feel that they're lacking something in their lives. The mind is such that it attaches importance to some object and then laments by thinking that we do not have that object and someone else has it. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. We're always disturbed, not happy, thinking someone has a better situation than ourselves. And when we think about it, we become happy. However, the devotees of the Lord experience the exact opposite after listening to Harikatha. They never feel any scarcity, nor do they feel lamentation, or they feel that they've attained the highest treasure. That is the natural effect of the Lord's Katha. So I just put this one here because you know, someone may, may say, how do I know I've got ruchi or taste? This is the symptom. Once having one who has taste and that person hears harikata, after hearing they feel, I've got no scarcity in my life. I have no lamentation. I've just got the highest treasure. I've got the highest treasure. And they just relish this. That is the symptom of one who's got this ruchi, this taste. This ruchi, this taste. So coming, uh, coming back to this point uh, about sevaya. So some people may say, yes, you know, I understand, I get it. That this verse is saying, Siyan Mahat Sevaya Vipraha. By such service, I will develop taste. But you know, where are these Mahatmas? Where can I find these devotees? And then service, how can I serve them? How can I serve them? Firstly, a Mahatmas we spoke about, and we said the Mahatmas are the devotees of the Lord. Uh, some of us feel that, you know, only the sannyasis, the Shila Prabhupada disciples, or the gurus, uh, they are they are what's being referred to here. But, you know, and many people have asked me this question, they say, but, you know, Vrindavan Chandra, you know, when the Maharaj comes, there's, you know, so many disciples, we do not even see them. Some of them don't even stay in the temple. They stay, you know, outside in someone's house. And, uh, you know, they got so much of cooks and they got only one person can do the ironing. Uh, uh, what service can I do? So, you know, my, my chances for developing Vasudev Kataruchi is limited. Uh, there's two problems there. Firstly, we limiting, we limit who we see as Mahatmas. Actually, there are many, many great souls, great devotees of the Lord. And uh, in our temple at Bhaktivedanta Manor, you know, every day I come across, uh, you know, different devotees. And when I speak to them, I hear about, he said, when you, when you, you can know what's in a person's heart when you speak to them. There are many, many great souls. Many, many great souls. And we should not limit who we are. And we should see every devotee of the Lord as a great soul. As a great soul. That's the first point. And the second point about service. Uh, there's two types of service. There is uh, Vapu and there's Vani. Vapu means serving the physical presence and Vani means serving the instruction. What's particularly 
very instructive or interesting about Srila Prabhupada's purport, and especially the third paragraph of this purport. Uh, Srila Prabhupada seems to give um, an emphasis on serving his instructions and his mission. Serving his instructions and his mission. And Prabhupada says, uh, you know, the mission of the spiritual master is to propagate Krishna consciousness uh, throughout the world. So maybe I'll just go back to that purport because it's just so valuable. Uh, Prabhupada is saying, the servants of God come to propagate God consciousness. An intelligent person should cooperate with them in every respect. So Prabhupada is giving us a clue here. If we have some doubt about what ways we can serve a great soul, uh, Prabhupada is saying, you know, you can serve, serve his mission. Prabhupada says, by serving the servant of God one, can please God more directly than serving the Lord. And then Prabhupada goes on to say that how the preachers of the Lord are more dearer to him uh, because they risk everything to preach. So one way we can can find out, discuss who's a Mahatma. Any devotee who is engaged in the preaching mission with heart and soul, or in some form, they are Mahatmas. And if we render such service to them, we will develop, we'll develop a taste by serving the servants of the Lord. One can develop a taste. And lastly, Prabhupada talks about this word Punya Tirtha Nishevanat. It's very interesting, this, this last line, Punya Tirtha Nishevanat. Um, tirtas are generally uh, places of pilgrimage. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada talks in, in, in a lecture he gave on this, uh, this particular verse. Prabhupada says there's two types of tirtas. It's the holy places of pilgrimage, and then you get the moving tirtas. And who are the moving tirtas? These are the devotees of the Lord, the pure devotees of the Lord, the preachers of Krishna consciousness. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once told Advaita Acharya uh, that you are, you are a moving place of pilgrimage uh, because you carry the Lord within your heart. What is a place of pilgrimage? A place of, place of pilgrimage is a place where the Lord's past times has been manifested or the deity of the Lord is manifested. The Lord's presence is there. So a devotee who, who carries the Lord within his heart, he's a moving place of pilgrimage because the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Um, I think I've said a bit. I mean, there's much more that can be said. Um, but I'll probably stop here to take any questions and comments because we also got... Uh, Emma Mataji singing a beautiful bhajan today. Uh, so I'll stop here. Dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, or reflections, uh, you can please. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, my Dhanavat Pranam. Dhanavat Pranam. Uh, Prabhuji, sometimes uh, devotees, sometimes in temples, we come across experience where we or our family members are offended by the speech or some action of devotees. So what should we do in, and what should be our attitude in such cases? Okay, let me understand your question first. So you're saying that when you go to a temple, some devotees have either said something or done something that's may, maybe felt you feel a bit offended. And normally when you feel that offended, uh, then that creates distance distance between you and the devotees, or even maybe distance in you wanting to come to the temple. Exactly. It, you it, want to avoid the negative place then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Srila Prabhupada sometimes compared ISKCON to a hospital. Uh, and normally we go to a hospital to be cured of some disease we have. It's inevitable when you go into a hospital, there are other sick people similar to us in that hospital. We can't have an expectation when we go to the hospital that we're only gonna see good, healthy, vibrant persons. We can, 
So one thing we can immediately do is to alter our expectations. Uh, not have an expectation that when we come to the society, that everyone is pure in heart, pure in deed and pure in words. Because it's a hospital, other sick people are coming there. We are likely to encounter such people. And it's inevitable when we meet such people that we may have some not so favorable experience. So one realistically thing we can do is alter our expectations. And secondly, we can also take it as a test that Krishna wants to see how eager, how keen we are to hear his message. And Prabhupada says, I created this ISKCON movement simply to give people the opportunity to hear. Uh, you know, we can take it as a test. So Krishna is saying, mm, I want to see how eager this person is to want to hear my message and how easily is distracted by externals. We need to be very fixed in our goal. And Krishna will see that one who is fixed in the goal, that despite all reversals, all challenges, all obstructions, one is still very, very eager to hear. And that's what means going to the temple or a Sangha means to hear. Then Krishna is pleased and Krishna bestows upon such a person, uh, you know, further taste. Krishna gives taste for that person. So those are just two points that comes off the top of my head, Sandeep Prabhu. I'm not sure if you identify with them. These are beautiful points. Thank you, Prabhuji. And, and this is perfect. Thank you. Hari, Hari Bhal Prabhu. Hari Krishna. Any other questions, comments, or reflections? Or let me see the chat box. Sometimes some devotees are shy to speak. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, thank you for the nice class, for the nice discourse. Uh, I am very happy when I listen to you talking uh, all, all the time. Anyway, um, one little rectification, if I may say it. You know, when you said about the, uh, the demons, who, the person who was listening to the Bhagavad Gita, so his, his name was... Um, Dundakari. Yeah, his brother's Dund name was Gukarna. Okay. okay. If I am correct, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I just, I couldn't remember the details and I just looked it up today. And from what I, I heard, and uh, it says that there was one great sage whose name was Gokarna. Gokarna yes, that was, was the elder brother. Yeah. The elder he brother was, of, of Dundakari. So he was narrating the Bhagavatam. Yes. And uh, um, Dindakari in the body of a ghost, he was mm -hmm. listening for seven days nonstop. And uh -huh. he was sitting in a hollow bamboo. So what uh -huh. happened then? Because he was, he was like distressed in the body of the ghost, like uh, he, what, he could not think of anything except for the miseries he was undergoing. Mm -hmm. And the other listeners of Bhagavatam, they would go home and they would forget, but he would not forget. He will think about what he has heard all night and whole day and for seven days. So at the end of seven days, he got the body like the uh, uh, Vishnu Dutas. Mm -hmm. So everybody was shocked. How come he is in the body, uh, ghost body, and we are uh, human, we are listening. Then the uh, Vishnu Dutas told them that uh, he, he was the one who was listening um, with attention. But you people, you would go home and sleep and all. But he was there all the time. He wouldn't leave that that um, place where the Bhagavatam was being narrated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for for giving more clarity to that pastime. It's a beautiful pastime which makes this point about the hearing with care and attention so nice. Thank you, Indulekha Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sailesh Prabhu, you have a reflection or a question? Wonderful, wonderful class. Um, just a, a further uh, expansion on a uh, beautiful point you made about uh, um, how Prabhupada defined uh, ISKCON as uh, temples being uh, uh, hospitals. Also, I think our Sastra says that there are 64 grades of devot devotees as well where there are so many grades of devotees, not for us to try and work out where people are, it's for Krishna to know, 
but there, there are all people at different passages and different paths and different stages of their devotion. We shouldn't judge them. We should see all um, as devotees, but quite often we label Mahatmas only as the uh, gurus or preachers, but quite often the great, greater Mahatmas are those that are doing their service quietly, diligently with a pure heart. They may not be in the forefront of any temple management or preaching or but we quite quite often they're the ones that are neglected and forgotten but are actually great souls and pure souls because they're doing such wonderful service so quietly so diligently so pure heartedly but they're quite often forgotten and we don't see them and it is for us to try and see those great devotees and hunt them out not hunt them, that's the wrong word sorry seek them out and seek, seek their blessings and uh, seek their association. So just wanted to make the, an expansion to your beautiful point, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ailesh Prabhu. That's so true. There are many silent workers in our ISKCON who are doing great service, who are very advanced by nature, but they are in the background. And uh, if we adopt a position that, you know, we'll try and serve um, as many devotees as we can, then we can never go wrong. We can never go wrong. We can well, please Krishna anyway. Thank you so much. Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, you'd like to offer a comment or a question or a reflection? Hello, Prav. What a beautiful class. I'm sure your Guru Maharaj is very pleased. Um, my reflection is that 25 years ago, I had no idea of Krishna consciousness. So all glory to Srila Prabhupada for awakening that dormant Krishna consciousness in my heart. And, uh, you know, in the last paragraph, it clearly says that serving the servants of the Lord is more pleasing to Lord Krishna than anything else. And your Guru Maharaj asked Srila Prabhupada, what is the best thing that two things are pleasing? According to me, distribution of your books, production and distribution of books, and building the wonderful temple in Mayapur. And Prabhupada smiled brightly and said, yes, you understood what I want. So now we want to please Prabhupada because by doing that, we are pleasing Krishna immediately. So the best way, Prabhupada said, is distribute my books. So a humble endeavor. All of us have contacts. Please distribute something. Be pleased in that service because that is the most Pleasing service to Krishna. There's nothing better. That's my reflection. Thank you, Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu. You always, uh, you and Prem Vilasi Mataji, you're always such, um, you know, stalwart devotees in, in coming forward and, and wanting to spread Krishna consciousness. So you're the living examples of that. And I always consider both of you to be great souls, Mahatmas. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, dear devotees, uh, you know, it, this bhajans that we normally sing, so important. They are so important because they show us the heart of the pure devotees of the Lord. So um, today, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, Emma Mataji, you are singing and uh, Sandosh Mataji is reading the English. That's right, Prabhuji. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen. And then Santosh Mataji, you can, uh, well, it's always good first to, to read the English and then sing after. Is that how we're going to do it today? Yes, Prabhuji, I'll recite the, um, read the English translation first and then Mataji can sing the bhajan. Okay, okay, let's do that. Lord Gaura, uh, Hare Krishna, everyone, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation. If Lord Gaura had not appeared as the Yuga Avatara in this age of Kali, then what would have hap become of us? How could we have tolerated living? Who in this universe would have ever learned about the topmost limits of loving mellows that comprise the glory of Sri Radha? Who would have had the power to render ecstatic devotional service that follows in the footsteps of the damsels of Vraja. Indeed, the clever expertise of the Vraja gopis 
is a prerequisite for entering the supremely sweet forest of Vrinda Devi. Oh, please sing again and again of the glories, glorious qualities of Lord Gauranga. Just try to keep your heart simple. Not even one person within this ocean of nescience has ever seen such a magnanimous personality as he, as he. Even though I chant the holy name of Lord Gauranga, somehow I still have not melted in ecstasy. How then have I maintained the burden of this body? How has the creator fashioned this body with a stone in place of Vasudeva Ghosh's heart? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Santosh Mataji. So, Emma Mataji, you yes. can uh, sing. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to sing this beautiful bhajan. Mm -hmm. It's an expression of gratitude to our Gora Hari for all the precious gifts that he's given us, blessed us with. So, its author is Vasudev Ghosh. It's by Vasudev Ghosh. And uh, I'll try and sing that. Yadi ko na hoy to, tabe ke hoy to, ke mone tari tade. Yadi ko na hoy to, tabe ke hoy to, ke mone tari tade. Radhar Mahima Prem Rasa Sima Jagate Janata Ke Radha Mahima Prem Rasa Sima Jagate Janata Ke Yadi go na hoi to, thabe ke hoi to, ke mo ne dari tate. Madhur vrinda vipina maduri, pravesha chaturi sa. Madhur vrinda vipina maduri, Pravesha chaturi saar. Varaja yuvati bhave rabhagati. Sakati hai to kaar. yuvati bhave rabhagati. Sakati hai to Yadi go na hoi to, tabe ke hoi to, ke mo ne dari ta te. Gau gau puna, gau rangge raguna, saral hai na mana. Gau gau puna, gau rangge raguna, saral hai mana. E bhav sagare mane dayale na dekhi ek jaan. E bhav sagare, sorry I've lost that. E bhav sagare mane dayale na dekhi ek jaan. Yadi go na hoi to, tabe ke hoi to, ke mo ne dari ta te. Yadi go na hoi to, tabe ke hoi to, ke mo ne dari ta te. Gaurang baliya, nage nu galiya, ke mo ne dari nu de. Gaurang baliya, nage nu galiya, ke mo ne dari nu de. Deva suhiya, pasha na diya, ke mo ne gadiya che. Deva suhiya, pasha na diya, ke mo ne gadiya che. 
यदि गो न हो तो तबे के हो तो के मोन दरिता दे राधार महिमा प्रेम रस सीमा जगत जानत के यदि गो न हो तो ताबे के हो तो के मोन धरिता दे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे जयो नित्यानंद राम नित्यानंद राम नित्यानंद राम जयो नित्यानंद राम जय गौरानिताय 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 जय गौरानिताय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रीयाद्वैत्यागदाधार शिव शि गौर भक्त वृंद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद शिल प्रभु पद पिता गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि को थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरि वंडरफुल वंडरफुल वेरी ब्यूटीफुल संग है मामा की जी सो नाइस आई वाज जस्ट थिंकिंग यू आर बंगाली ना It's it's so nice, very very nice to me, and uh, sung with lots of bhav and emotion, which makes it even more relatable. Um, one question came from some devotees: what, you know, Is this song in Bengali? Yes, it is. Uh, why so many songs in Bengali? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in West Bengal. A lot of his associates uh, were in Bengal, and uh, even Shri Prabhat appeared in in Bengal. So. that is our lineage that is our heritage um in one sense it doesn't matter the language doesn't matter it's it's what's being said but uh yes sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and many of his great great associates appeared in the bengal region so uh, thank you very much dear devotees to, for this wonderful session for your participation your questions and your contributions and reflections all glories to your service All the glories to Shri Prabhupada. Vanche kalpa chura vya. Chakri pasanti vya. Chakri namha vya. Chakri namha vya. Chakri namha vya. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you so much for your wonderful talk. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna thank you Hare Krishna thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna